พระสมเด็จวัดระฆัง fourth prize winner from the c h a n g s i p m o o artisan c h a n g l u a n g s i t i g a n fourth prize winner with authenticity certificate from the great s o m n e p a p u t a j a n t o from r a n g s i of Wat r a k a n g k o Sitaram. This amulet has been issued with certificate and prize win from the s a m a t o m Prathae, m u n g s a y a m This p a t s o m n e p has all of the classic features and An immensely beautiful surface, texture, and appearance, and has at some time received some kind of lacquering and has been cleaned in the ancient past at some point. You can see the t a g l i n g a marbled surface, and you can notice white powdery substance rising up between the arms. And the elbows in the in the deep recesses below the hands and between the knees on the dark areas, which is p o n g b a n g and b l u a k o i talc and talcs and um, seashell powders, and you will see red elements within the m o o n s a n Uh, some of which come from broken pieces of p r a g a m p e n g pet, and others which come from um, maybe rust and other herbal ingredients, and d i n g b o n g which is um, marsh earths. And here we can see rising up on one of the levels of the d a s e A piece of red substance, and to the left of it, some white s i l a t i k u n hin s i l a t i k u n which is a crystalline quartz-like substance. Here we can see the amulet with its certificate. Looking now towards the head and the p a g e t the top knot down over the chest, blurring a little bit because we're looking through the. Glazed window of a gold casing, <clears throat> and you can see various elements within the one s a n You can see the cracks, which results from many, many, many years of um, the amulet drying and slowly shrinkage through the moisture leaving the amulet. You can see around the arch of the s o m d e d We see here the gate, p a g e t top knot, which is rather thick and touches the uh, rim of the arch, which is what makes this a pim jarot sum. Jarot sum means to bump against the arch. If it pierced through and appeared above the arch, it would be called pim gate talot sum. Both being pimyai, the s a p i m y a i ke j o r o t s u m of the c h a n g l u a n g w i j a n artisan who made the block press for this amulet for s o m d e t Paputa c h a n t o Here we can see some uh, p r a g a m p i n g pet, one of the necessary elements which s o m d e t t o used in his b a d a k h a n and we can see close-ups of the. Ridged, marbled appearance, coming from shrinkage, and if you look carefully, you will see very small, tiny, the odd, tiny, whitish, quartzish-looking crystal, which is hinsilatikun. There were so many ingredients used. One of the things which gives this very soft, smooth texture to the moon s a n was the fact that he used. Uh, k o i n a m w a bananas to help mix the powders together to make them creamy, and this is part of what gives the character to Somni b a d r a k a n g Here we can see the pet, the bang, rising up over the black lacquer, 
which was actually red in those days actually you can see here some close-ups of the lacquer stains and the cracks and the white powdery substance on the lacquer stains which is bang and a very very smooth marbly appearance which can only come through aging to have this kind of texture and appearance you have to put up with going blurry because this lens is very difficult to film with see when it focuses with there uh, you can see a little black spot just then which might have been and here you can see some pieces of patat little black spots and little white pieces of hinsilaticun the black spots might be banana seed they might be bailan um burnt parchment grimoires both of which are present within along with various other ingredients which um, <coughs> of memory I can't list all of them because there are so many but you can see there are little crystals um, black substances red substances within here and you have to get used to looking each different wadra, uh, pass from the Padrakhan actually looks different because of its aging how it's been kept um, also the pots of muansan when they would run out of clay they would make a new the mixture again which would give a different result in a slightly different tone of color and also depends on how the devotee has used it over the centuries and various other aspects and so you never really will see two somde madrakan that are exactly the same which is part of what makes it quite difficult to recognize until you know the Muansan as to the Pim there were in the past only about seven really accepted Pim which then became about ten with subcategories but now uh, many other Pim are becoming accepted this is already an accepted Pim Neom one of the members of the original pantheon oh, I see some beautiful ingredients inside here <coughs> it's wonderful to study especially if you know what ingredients are in there you then know what to look for and when you see them then you slowly start to recognize oh this is Bailan this is Hinsilati Kun this is a piece of Pragamping Pet this is a bit of black banana seed. This is black parchment grimoire. Mm. And so on. And this is black hoy that makes the black hoy is the ground down shells. Uh, shellfish shells. Which gives a very fine powdery white uh, powder. And of course, Pong Rob, the five kinds of sacred yantra powders of, uh, made by Somdetto. And there you go, Pasomdet, Padrakang Pimjarotsum, of the Changsip uh, Mu Royal Artisan Group, the Chang Luang Sitikan, one of the other members of the Changsip um, Mu preferred group of artisans. So now we just take a last admiring look at the front face of the amulet and I shall end the video by showing you the whole piece within its solid gold casing. the most famous Thai Buddhist amulet in the world and an eternal classic reaching up to almost two centuries old which can be what I call a family heirloom amulet for your descendants to inherit and pass on down through the family for 
for other centuries. One of the most sacred amulet, if not the most sacred amulet in Thailand. The Pat Somdet Wadrakang of Somdet Paputajanto from Langsi.